Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's excellent to have you here as always, and thank you for watching. I've got something cool to show you guys today, and it's this guy right here. And you might be like, Kurt, it's just a hand stop. It's just a piece of plastic that keeps your hand from going forward and getting burnt by the suppressor. Yes, except for this one does this. Yes, that is an integrated, powerful green laser into a hand stop. This is from Viridian, and I just have to show you guys how powerful this thing is. It's not very dark outside right now. It's probably two hours until dark. Yes, it is a little bit overcast, but it's not exceptionally dark for you guys to be able to see that. So I'm pretty impressed with that. And that is what we're gonna be talking about in today's video. And now we're gonna shoot it because I can't. 50 yards. Viridian HS1 is first and foremost a hand stop designed to ergonomically position the shooter's hand on the forward rail while generating an index point rearward of any hazards located at the business end like a hot suppressor, gas block, or simply the muzzle of the firearm. We want to keep all those fingers guys. Integrated into this hand stop is a visible laser for fast acquisition and targeting. The module is located at the very front of the hand stop and is activated via a push button in the finger well. The device attaches using the M-lock pattern and this is important for minimizing offset from the rail. I have a full video on this topic and why it's important. I'll have it linked down below. The laser module is adjustable for windage and elevation via two set screws located at the front of the body. And the unit is powered by a single CR13N battery located under this screw cap. The polymer construction keeps the weight down to a few ounces so we won't be adding a whole lot of mass to the end of the gun. This is especially true when we're talking about night vision, which, look at that, they make an IR only version as well. We're going to be evaluating both of these right now with a battery of tests. That was completely unnecessary, but definitely necessary at the same time. So first up, it's polymer in construction. So is it recoil sensitive? You guys ready for something ridiculous? <laughs> so not only is it canted out because there's some interference with this Henry X rail, but I had to remove the front bolt to get it to fit. So this should be even worse. Like worst case scenario, you would never do this whatsoever. We're gonna run 20 rounds of 4570. These are 325 grain loadings and they're doing about 2100 feet per second. So I think, I think we're gonna get some, a decent test on whether this thing is going to be sensitive to recoil. And thank you to Henry Repeating Arms for adding a healthy butt pad to the rear of this Henry X. Here goes nothing. She is not a joke, boys and girls. She is not a joke at all. <laughs> that was six. Five plus one is the answer. I said it was going to shoot too low too. I had to clear it out and I forgot to stop. Okay. Okay. And testing, testing, one, two, one, two. 
we still have function on our laser. So we're gonna go with not recoil sensitive. I can tell you what is recoil sensitive though. How about blast sensitive? Yet another ridiculous setup. There's no reason you would ever do this ever, but here it is. As you can see, the laser emitter is definitely in front of this fire breathing monster here. And if it is blast sensitive, this will tell us. Huh. This gun is usually the epitome of reliability. Really? Are we serious right now? <laughs> My most reliable gun stops working? I wonder if something's loose. Although it's double feeding, that might be a magazine issue. Yeah, I'm going with magazine issue. Double feeds are caused by magazines. So, but out of a bulgy, whatever. We're just gonna soldier through. Two rounds off the ground. <laughs> really? <laughs> Follow up video coming your guys' way on what's going on with my mark 47 but if we look at this we can see there's definitely some it got some it got some heat and she still works yes um, that's just me fat fingering it <laughs> heat sensitive impracticality taken to its extreme so you can see that i've got this mounted right underneath of this suppressor Again, you would never ever do this. I wanna see if I can cook it. So we're gonna shoot three mags through this gun. And then basically I'm gonna let it sit for a minute upside down to see if we can cook this thing. So it is not actually touching the suppressor anywhere as far as I can tell. Today is not a good day for functionality of guns, boys and girls. Smoking, 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 act, even the receiver's hot. So we're just gonna sit here. I'm gonna set it upside down on that barrel over there for a little bit and I'll just time lapse it. Hot enough that I care not to hang on to the handguard. Actually, can't hold on to the handguard. Uh, suppressor, I can get about there before I don't want to get any closer. Okay, so a fair amount of the heat has dissipated from the device. I mean, it's designed to do that. And still works. Going with not heat sensitive but hot enough to melt itself to my tailgate. So I'm pushing down on the stock right now. 
Yeah. Ah, mistakes were made. I even went as far as to put it outside all night in the rain to see if it was moisture sensitive. Let's switch gears for a second, move from the visible guy over to the IR only version. And to do that, we're gonna have to break out the night vision. <laughs> okay, so here we have the laser from the hand stop. And what I wanted to do was compare it to my integrated laser that I have on my side of my gun here. Let's see. Okay, so that's it at max. Okay. And actually, that thing's pretty close to zeroed. It's pretty close. It's a little bit to the left. But you can see in comparison, like... Now, granted, this is a full-powered laser. And in fact, that is more powerful than I care to have it. As you can see, we've got a lot of bloom to it. And that's kind of counterproductive. So I prefer to run it about... See how when it hits that reflective surface, it still bounces a little bit. I like it about there. And if we compare that, yeah, it's a little bit more powerful in the setting that I would typically choose to put it on. Where are we hitting? Let's look at it against my illuminator. Yeah, it shows up great against my illuminator. So, definitely powerful enough. There is the integral setting. And there's the laser hand stop. Laser hand stop is blinking. So yeah. I would say that their IR version is definitely... So yeah, I would say the IR version definitely uh, meets the criteria. If there was one critique that I would add, it would be in the IR only version. And what I would say is I would really like to see this be a dual spectrum laser. And what I mean by that is it's relatively difficult to zero things under nods once it has gotten dark outside. Especially when we're talking about little tiny tools to be able to mess with it. It's almost always better <laughs> to do it under twilight with a visible analog or do it during evening daylight with a visible analog just because it's going to be easier to work with again it's not impossible to do but if you they were going to do a gen 2 i would say hey viridian look into adding that dual spectrum capability and or if i had to be really really nitpicky maybe find a way so that we don't have to use a little tiny tool to make adjustments i'm glad that they sent me two of them because they both came with toolkits and i absolutely lost one of those little tiny Allen wrenches. Of course, never to be found again in the abyss that is the range after dark. Again, continuous improvement type thing, absolutely not required. Guys, that's all I've got on the HS1 from Viridian. It's a hand stop with a laser integrated into it. If you don't get it, you don't get it. Thanks for watching guys, hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, sound off the comment section down below. If you didn't, then sound off in the comment section down below. It absolutely does help out with the algorithm. And if you're shy and you don't want to leave a comment, I understand. There's plenty of buttons that you can push down there, and they all help out. And if you feel so inclined, please visit the VSO Affiliates page, as well as our Patreon and Subscribe Star pages, where you can contribute directly to the VSO Gun channel.